Okay, hello everyone. Um, can someone please acknowledge that you could hear me? I can. Great, thank you. Hello and welcome to the Gen North America webinar series. Thank you for joining us today. In our 2018 webinar portfolio, in addition to featuring ongoing and completed research, we are scheduled to feature a number of innovative tools available to guideline developers. Today's webinar is a novel resource for guideline developers and systematic reviewers. The Task Exchange, a partnership between Cochrane and Guidelines International Network, is an online platform that connects people working on health evidence projects with people who have the time and skills to help. Dr. Emily Steele is our esteemed speaker today, and she will provide all the information we need to engage the Task Exchange. Emily is the Task Exchange Community Engagement and Partnerships Manager and holds the equivalent position for Cochrane Crowd, Cochrane Citizen Science Platform. She holds a PhD in Epidemiology and Masters of Public Health and began her career as a physiotherapist way back when. She is also an avid nature lover. lover. In her spare time, if not camping and trekking, Emily is often found weaving at her floor loom. So before we, I turn it over to Emily, I want to do some housekeeping. Um, first, please note that all participants were muted upon entry to the meeting to ensure a smooth recording of the session. Please do not unmute yourself, and please do not place us on hold. If necessary, please leave the meeting and redial back into the meeting. It's also preferable that you not join by video as it might distract from the slide projection. Um, we have a lot of 30 minutes for questions at the end of the presentation. Throughout the presentation, please submit your questions directly to the host, Melissa Browers, via the chat feature on WebEx. I am not Melissa Browers. I am Yara Brahamian, but I am using her account to run this uh, webinar today. So please communicate with me via the chat feature on WebEx to convey your questions. And at the end, I will convey them all to Emily. The slides and recording of this webinar will be made available um, on the GIN website within a week or so. I also want to alert you that our next webinar is on March 27. Tom Getches, GIN North America's immediate past chair, will host a great group of representatives from the College of American Pathologists, American Society of Clinical Oncology, Program and Evidence-Based Care through Cancer Care Ontario, as well as the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery to discuss the philosophy of guideline public comment and the related approach of these organizations. Also, one more notification, registration is now open for the GIN 2018 conference to be held in Manchester, England. This year's theme is why we do what we do, the purpose and impact of guidelines. It is a great opportunity for all those who work with guidelines, whether in development, methodology, implementation, and or evaluation, to come together and exchange ideas, network, and learn about all that is exciting in the world of evidence-based medicine. Okay. Um, let's get started. So, Emily, um, I'll keep the ball as mentioned until we do our first poll and turn it over to you. So, go ahead, Emily Steele. Great, thank you. I'll just check that you can hear me properly. A little bit louder would be better. Okay. Uh, well, thanks everyone for coming along and thank you uh, for inviting me along. We're really You're thrilled to low. be able to have this opportunity to present about task exchange. Um, so I might get you to switch to the next slide, if that's okay. So this is what we're going to cover today. So we'll have a look at what is Task Exchange, what's the platform all about. We'll have a brief look at the history of the platform, and then we'll talk in, a little, in some detail about what the benefits of joining Task Exchange might be for GIN members. And then before we go to questions, we'll look at, at really at the nitty gritty of how you actually use the platform. So if we go to the next slide, before I get going, I'm really interested to hear if any of you are current members of Task Exchange. It'll just give me an idea of who I'm pitching to for the rest of the presentation. So if you could have a look at the poll there. Yurado, you might want to give some instructions. I'm not quite sure how that works.
So I'm hoping that everyone can see the poll question there. Are you a current member of Past Exchange? And there should be answer options, yes and no, for you to fill in. No options. Are you there, Yurado? Sorry, yes, I, I'm sorry, I was on mute. I have launched the poll. I'm not sure if you're able to see the qu answer uh, options. No. I can't see no. it on my end. Okay. Let's try it one more time. Hmm. Yeah, I can't see it there. I'm sorry, I can't see it either. Uh, perhaps we can try um, participants raising hands, or we can come back to the poll. Emily, I could take a few minutes to rebuild the poll. Sure. Look, it's not, not okay, so clear. let me hand over the ball to you. Yep. Right. One second. like it's working. So I'll keep moving ahead. Okay. So if we look at, look at what is Task Exchange. So we're an online platform that brings people together to get health evidence projects done more quickly. And it's really, it's a place to go for two reasons. The first is if you need help with a project and I'm assuming most of the listeners on this webinar are going to be in that camp. So it's a way to overcome time and skill challenges within your project team. And secondly, it's a place to go if you want to help out. So we provide opportunities for meaningful contributions by evidence newcomers and also people with valuable skill sets. And when I talk about health evidence projects, we're really open um, as to what we mean by that. So it might be that you're working on a systematic review. For this group, it's probably more likely that you're working on, on a guideline, development of a guideline or other guideline-related work. But actually, um, we're very open in terms of what sort of projects we host, as long as they're to do with health evidence. So this just gives you a sense of what the platform looks like. This is our home page. Um, and the, the first uh, banner in purple there uh, gives you the, the, two, the senses of those two reasons why you might come to pass Task Exchange. So you can either post a task or you can contribute your skills. Um, and there are various other buttons on that home page. Uh, I won't go into any detail about them, but yeah, those are really the two main reasons why you might come to Task Exchange. So we're now two years old. Development started by um, Cochrane in late <laughs> July 2015. And we launched within Cochrane about eight months later in February 2016. So that launch, by within Cochrane, I mean that initially we were just accepting members from within uh, the Cochrane network, and we were initially just focused on systematic review tasks. Um, we then opened up beyond Cochrane in August 2016, and throughout this history of Task Exchange, we were always um, talking with Jin about how eventually Task Exchange might partner up with Jin, and the launch of that partnership happened in July of last year. And what that means is behind the scenes there was an extra bit of development that went on to make sure that the platform was appropriate for um, guidelines work. So the launch of the partnership with Jin, July 2016, this was the email that, that was sent out to, to you guys, to the Jin membership, and uh, it was celebrated with a blog um, on the Cochrane Community website. So there are lots of potential benefits for GIN members of becoming a member of Task Exchange, and really it's all about connecting with the right people at the right time to get your work done more quickly. So if we look at what type of help could you seek through Task Exchange, as I said before, it's, it's really open, and I feel like it's, it's just a matter of um, you know, thinking really broadly about the kinds of things that you need help with with, your, with the sort of work that you're doing. A lot of the um, tasks that are posted by, by virtue of the name task are help for a specific task. So, um, and just a couple of examples here. It could be 
doing a literature review for you, or it could be something um, aimed at perhaps a more junior person, um, or just simply organising references, like you might have done a, a search, a lit search, and you might have references that they need to find. Go, just simply going to seek out the PDF and save you some time, or perhaps organising your references on your reference software. But really, anything to do with the project that you're doing. You might also go to Task Exchange for expert advice. So it might be that you're looking for a content expert or a methodological expert. You might go there to search for a member for a project panel. So you know you might need consumer representatives on a particular issue, as an example. So that gives you some ideas. But yeah, really, it's um, there's not many limitations on what sort of tasks and what sort of help you can seek on Task Exchange. Emily, we're getting some requests for you to speak louder, if possible, or perhaps speak closer to the uh, microphone. Okay, Thank you. sure. See what I can do. Thanks. Thank you. Emily's calling in from Melbourne, so there might be a technology issue. In terms of who, who could help you, we have a, a really big and growing community of all sorts of different people on Task Exchange, and I've listed some of the types of um, people and skill sets on the slide there. So we have a lot of systematic reviewers, both very senior people um, and junior people coming up through the ranks. We've got um, content experts in all sorts of areas of health. Um, we've got a lot of consumers joining in, carers and patients. We have um, some specific methodological experts, so some statisticians. Uh, we have a lot of translators, and I'm not sure if that's useful for the guideline audience, but certainly for systematic reviewers, the translators have been really important as they're finding articles in different languages and needing them translated. And we have a quite a large um, body of students, so yeah, people studying medicine, allied health, nursing, various other things, people who are interested in gaining experience in health evidence projects. So they're all there as well and very keen to take part and gain experience. We're really proud of our community and how it's growing. So we've now got almost 2,000 members um, and we've hosted over 500 tasks. And the other line there, messages, is another way that we um, evaluate engagement of our community. Messages are um, sent between people who've posted tasks and people who've responded tasks, so uh, responded, who are responding to tasks. So they're sending messages back and forth to organise um, who's going to do the task and the parameters of the task. And you can see, we, as we went open access in around August 2016, it's just interesting to see that that, that um, clearly led to a, a big upshoot in the number of members, which is what we'd hoped. And most importantly probably uh, for you guys to know is that 75% of task posters connect with a helper on Task Exchange. So it's a statistic that we're really proud of. So you're very likely to find someone to help you if you're posting on Task Exchange. This slide um, gives some examples of tasks that have been posted um, by someone in the guidelines community. So these are three tasks where this person's seeking um, patient and carer partners for guideline panels. And this gives you a sense of how the tasks are displayed in the task list. So you can see that the date by which the um, work is needed is displayed in the, um, in the list here. There's a title of the task and a little bit of detail about what the task actually is. This I put in just because it's so beautiful. This was a road trip I did recently through New South Wales in a, and this was in a, a beautiful national park. And the next slide I took from the top of, whoops, at the top of one of those rocks. Let's see if I can get that back. There we go. It's just a spectacular view. Here we go. So getting down into 
how task exchange is actually used. Um, this gives you a bit an overview if you're in the camp of wanting to get help. So it's a very simple and intuitive platform to use and the process is firstly that you log in. It's when it's, it's the first time that you've logged in, you'll be creating a profile so that, so that people can find you, so that people who are interested in working with you can see who you are. Um, you'll then post your task and through that process you're describing the task that you need completed and the kind of person that you're looking for, so the skills needed to do it. You'll tell people what reward you will offer. Um, sometimes people are offering authorship if, if they're looking for someone to make a really significant contribution to a paper or a report. More often people are offering acknowledgement um, in the paper or report or the final product. So when you're ta um, posting a task, you're also saying when you need the work to be completed by. And once you post the task up, interested people will see the tasks and contact you directly through the platform. So they send a message through the plat platform which comes to you uh, at your email address so you don't even need to go to the platform itself. Once you've posted a task, the other thing you can do, so you obviously once you post, you're waiting for people to respond. The other proactive thing you can do is browse the list of experts. In other words, the, browse the community profiles and you can, that's another way of finding people that are potentially appropriate for your task and you can contact um, anyone directly. Um, so a combination of those things, you'll end up choosing the right person and getting your task completed. On the flip side of that, if you're looking to help out, you'll, you'll be logging in, you'll be creating a profile, you'll then browse the list of tasks um, that are available to find what interests you. You're also able to receive weekly email notifications of tasks that are available, so that's a really easy way to keep on top of um, potential opportunities. You'll have a look at what reward is offered and when the task needs to be completed by, and then through task exchange, you'll connect with the person you're looking to um, help. Um, and, you know, not everyone gets chosen for every task, but someone does. So if you're chosen, you then get ahead, complete the task, and help finish the project. So I'm just going to take you through now what the platform actually looks like as you're using it. The first thing is how do you get to the platform? You can actually get to it through your JIN dashboard. So there's a button on everyone's dashboard to visit Task Exchange, so that's one way. Of course, you can go directly to the Task Exchange website. You need to sign up for a Cochrane account. Um, so the first time when you sign up to Task Exchange, it'll take you to this page. You'll create a Cochrane account, which just takes a couple of minutes and then you'll be ready to sign, uh, to log in to Task Exchange itself. As I said, you'll create your profile. So here's an example of someone um, who sits within, is a, is a member of GIN as well as Cochrane. So a photo always helps, I think. Um, there's an area to write a bit about who you are, flag which, um, which of the two groups you're a member of, if either. Obviously, you guys are a member of at least one of the two groups. Um, you can say what area of expertise you have, what skills you have. There's an area to um, write about languages that you speak if you're interested in helping out with translation work. So that's a quick look at the profile pages. So most importantly, this is how you post a task. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward, so adding a, a title, uh, what your task is all about, some detail about the task, the help topic, um, you can put in the, your GIN um, affiliation and then there's an area to go into the detail of what member organisation within GIN you're a part of. The review or guideline title, the type of skills that the person you're looking for needs to have. And then there's a tick box for entry level tasks. So this is where if you think this might be something appropriate for someone who's fairly new to health evidence, like a student 
or someone with less than a year of experience in evidence synthesis. Um, tick that and it, it and it will then be highlighted so students will or newcomers will will go directly to those tasks um, and it's a way of perhaps finding someone quicker because our newcomer uh, the body of newcomer members is quite big so there's a reward section there where you can tick authorship or acknowledgement or payment and when it needs to be completed by and then there's some more room there to describe the perfect applicant for you so you make sure you get the right person or the right people applying So you can also go directly to browse the community profiles um, and you can filter that by uh, topic expertise, by skills, by language spoken and I think I mean, this is a good example of someone who has filled in their profile thoroughly and someone who hasn't so obviously you know, it's quite difficult to, to know much about someone if they haven't filled out their profile correctly. It's a good um, reminder for all of us I think to fill out our profiles when we first join. Um, so if you were looking to offer um, or to contribute to a project, you might browse the list of tasks. And again, they can be filtered by skills. They can be filtered by skill level. So if there was an, so the options there are any skill level or beginner task. And by language as well, we put that there because we have so many language related tasks. Slightly fiddly. So if I was interested in responding to this task, I would click that respond button button in purple. Ah, oh, so fiddly, sorry about that. Skipping over slides. It would then take me to the get in contact this get in contact page where I write your message explaining who I am and why I'm interested. And then the task poster will receive the message and take it from there. So then you'll get your task completed and it's, it's a very simple process. We think the platform's really quite intuitive to use um, and it just, it, it works. It, so it really does get people's um, projects done more quickly, get them linked in with the right people very quickly. There's a beautiful waterfall that I saw on that same road trip. Um, this one's 115 metres high with those two, two tiers in the waterfall, really lovely. I just want to tell you as well about two new features. So we do have uh, at times we do another round of development and recently we've um, put these two new features in place. So the first one is uh, allowing you to say thanks to your helper. So it gives you a chance to say thank you and to recommend them. And you're alerted to that opportunity by the bell which is um, on your home page when you've got a red alert next to your bell. You click on that and you, you'll get taken to a page like this. You'll click on the person's profile, the button that says recommend, and then you can write up a recommendation for them, which means that when you browse the network, you'll see the recommendation flag under the photo there. So they'll, it'll be obvious um, that they've been recommended and when you click into someone's full profile, the recommendation appears there. So if you have posted a task and you get five responses and you will then go and look at their profiles and it's really great if you can see that someone's had five recommendations and maybe you even know the people that have recommended them, then that gives you a sense that this, is a, this could be a good helper. The other new feature I've mentioned a, a bit just a second ago is around evidence newcomers and how they're an important um, group of helpers for us. We wanted to make it easy for them to see which tasks are um, suitable for them. So even from the home page we've got a button there that says browse tasks for beginners so they can go straight from the home page to see the tasks that have been flagged as being good for evidence newcomers. If they went to the full task list, they would be looking for the green leaf task, so entry level good for growing skills. So 
here I'm thinking if any of, of you guys are teachers, have students, um, this can be a great thing to get them onto. Task exchange is a way for them to gain experience and you'd be directing them to green leaf paths or directing them to the button on the home page for newcomers. So really that's the end of the, the spiel from me. Um, I'm really hoping that this will motivate you to go and try it for yourself and check it out. There's again the website. We're really open to feedback. We are still a very new platform and we are always um, improving things. So we'd love to hear your feedback once you have a look at it yourself. And you can always email me. My email address is there at the bottom of the screen. Of course, you can email me if you ever want to find out more about the platform, what we've got in store, um, any other news, you can contact me. And I did put this in as well. Um, we're always looking for ways that we can help spread the word about the platform. So if you go away um, from the presentation and think that you, that other people, colleagues or students might want to know about the platform, there are some ideas there for how you can help to spread the word. You can also just be in contact with me if you're interested in perhaps um, working with me on an article for a newsletter or um, a blog post. I really welcome those sorts of um, opportunities. And I've also put there a web address. You can access infographics. So like the one I've got on that screen there, they can be quite nifty things to just send out in emails to, to students or colleagues so you can access them directly through that web address. Yurado, what do you think about the poll? Should we? So I think that we can um, ask this question. The polling feature isn't working properly, but we can ask um, participants to respond to your, this question via the chat feature. Um, they can respond to the host. Um, right now, we could take a minute for everyone to respond. Yeah, so where I'm coming from here, as, as you've heard, the guidelines community um, and opening up to the guidelines community is still fairly new for task exchange. And I'm really curious about the kinds of tasks, the kinds of things that the guidelines community are likely to want task exchange for. Um, and as I said, we don't have a lot of parameters or limitations on this. I'm most curious because part of my role is making sure that we're reaching out to the right responders as well. So if there are skills that you might be looking for from the guidelines community um, that may not be well represented yet within the community, it's part of my role to find find those skill sets and attract those people into the platform. So that's partly why I'm interested in what you think you might use it for. So I'm getting a, uh, quite a number of responses. Um, Emily, let me go through them. Um, there's been a couple of questions about this. What, um, what are the requirements of um, Cochrane membership? Can anyone just um, go onto the website and become a member and start using the task exchange? Yes, that's right. Anyone um, can sign up to Cochrane and start using Task Exchange. Cochrane memberships, there are many tiers of memberships, um, but the basic, basic requirement to sign up to Cochrane, anyone can do. Okay. Um, and um, someone said they would, they usually need help with data extraction from screened and studies as part of Systematic a systematic reviews, I think that would be an available task, right? Yeah, data, yeah. data extraction. Yes, absolutely. That's one of our most popular types of tasks. Right, and there's um, two more respondents who said they would use it for technical aspects, such as conducting meta-analyses. Yep. That seems Fantastic. to be... Yeah, so we certainly got a pool of statisticians who were um, savvy. With right. Um, there are a couple of uh, folks who said they would participate as respondents, so I guess volunteers to perform tasks. Yeah. And um, okay, I will share them as they come along, but I think those were the general um, areas of response. Okay, great, thank you. I'm going to move on to your next slide. Oh, questions. Okay. I can provide you with some questions that we've been getting in throughout your um, session. 
um, how there have been a number of questions about the reward system. Um, what, is it, first of all, is it a requirement that the uh, there be a reward of some sort? Uh, it is a requirement. Um, I guess we encourage acknowledgement um, as a as a, a basic offering that if someone's doing some work for your project that they're acknowledged within whatever the output of the, you know, normally there would be a report or a paper, that, uh, okay. whatever that key output is that the person is named in an acknowledgement is, is usually appropriate. But having said that, that you know, perhaps there, are, there might be exceptions that I haven't thought of, but, but that is considered, I guess, the norm on the, so I, another person asked, in line with what you're saying, what types of rewards yield the best response? Is it monetary rewards or acknowledgement? Um, to be honest, we haven't had a lot of um, paid tasks. Um, I think if some, a lot of the responders are people wanting more experience not all of them, but, but a lot of them are students or newcomers. Um, I think, I mean, the opportunity for them to be, to be author, authored, to, to, um, to be a named author on a paper is really exciting. So I'd say right. very attractive, but obviously it needs to, the, the job being asked needs to be worthy of authorship. So yes, the consideration for the people posting as to what's appropriate. Um, do you have a process of assessing the quality of responses provided in the exchange? No, I, I guess um, I'm thinking that that's probably getting at the issue of yeah the the quality of the work that these people yes. are to produce. So the acknowledgement and um, recommendation system we put in place to uh, like as a way of um, approaching that issue. So we think that if you can see that someone's been recommended, you know, by five different people who you may know already or you, and you can see who they are, we think that's a, a really good sign that this person is likely to produce work of good quality. Um, so that's Do you have a method of dealing with negative statements about performance at this time? No, we don't. So the recommendations, it, it up to the, the poster definitely doesn't have to make a recommendation for a person, so the poster will make a recommendation when they're truly wanting to recommend them. Um, so yeah, it, sometimes people don't receive recommendations. We actually, I have, I have actually honestly never heard a neg any negative feedback <laughs> from, from anyone. Um, that's great. But that's not to say it doesn't happen from time to time. Okay, um, I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Is criteria for membership offering um, volunteering your expertise? So if you're asking for a task, do you have to uh, pay back with it, offering the task exchange your services at some point? Could you say that again? I didn't quite catch it. If I go on to task exchange seeking for help, um, do I need to, at some point, um, offer the task exchange my expertise no. or my help? No, there's no requirement for that at all. Okay, great. Um, and uh, we have a question, um, sort of interesting. Uh, this person is interested to know if it's appropriate to post a full-time job on this platform. Human resources departments don't necessarily know where to go to recruit staff for guideline-related positions, and this seems to be a good place for that. Mm, that's really interesting, and I've never thought about that before. Um, and I would say that I would probably need to talk with the people that I work with around our sense for that. But if, whoever, if whoever's asked the question wants to follow up with me, please email and then we can chat about that. Um, great. Um, I 
uh, <laughs> I'm not getting any more questions. There are very there are a number of questions specifically about the rewards, and I think you addressed them greatly. And there is a question about access. You mentioned something about how do we access the Gin dashboard? It's unrelated to task exchange, but I could respond to that. If you have a Gin website login, you will have access to your own Gin dashboard, um, to which you can add the task exchange. Um, I think that's it. There are no more qu oh, there's one more question, Straggler. Is there a vetting process for those who volunteer their time, and how does one determine the individual's knowledge and expertise? Yeah, there isn't a vetting process by us. Um, we hope that, pe that people, we're encouraging people to fill out their profile very thoroughly to explain exactly who they are, and what skills they have, and how much experience they have. Then we're encouraging the task posters to be really specific as well in the task posts about what they're looking for in terms of experience and so on. Um, you can look at the recommendations that someone has had and again looking at who's done the recommending can help you, um, uh, you know, in the vetting uh, so to speak. And then it's up to you I guess to, in your messaging, in those first messages with someone to, to um, feel them out yourself. Um, beyond what I've said already, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, I think in one of the examples you featured, you noted that, or um, you noted that uh, there's patient engagement. You can ask for patient volunteers on guideline panels. Yeah. Correct, so how do you engage patients? How do you um, invite them to the task exchange? How are they made aware of this um, resource? different ways. One is we work quite closely with the Cochrane Consumer Network and so they they have a whole community of all different types of you know consumers who have lots of different perspectives. Some of them might be carers, some of them might be patients themselves, some of them might be health advocates, um, public um, health advocates. So, so we um, reach out to their community but we also do our own um, promotional work just through Twitter where we engage with consumer groups as well and um, various other avenues we write up about task exchange in different newsletters and blogs um, and yeah all different um, so I think we were attracting all different kinds of audiences and reaching out to different groups through all of those avenues and um, the patients who um, become volunteers do you um, require them to take, say, the Q evidence-based training for patients, or do you have any other sort of evidence training for them? Not at all, no. So, um, yeah, again, en so anyone can sign up to Task Exchange. Um, we don't require them to do anything in order to, any particular training in order to sign up to Task Exchange, no. Okay. Um, and one more question. What types of conflict of interest information do you collect about volunteers? That is a really great question and I don't have that information uh, to hand right now. We have very, very recently added um, some information about conflict of interest. I think people have to fill that out when they're filling out their profile. And it's, yeah, it's brand new, and I, I actually can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> but, um, Great, so there is a process or in the works. There is something there, yes. Great. Um, I think that's the end of the questions that I've received. Um, and I think, Emily, can you sh um, put your email up on the screen one more time? I think it's on your next slide if people have any follow-up questions. And also the GIN address is going to come up next. So if you have questions specific for to Emily, you can send an email to taskexchange at cochrane.org or you can contact guidelines, um, the GIN North America, and we will convey your questions to Emily. And one more slide, Emily. One more slide, sure. Yeah. Just a reminder that our next webinar is on March 27th. We will send out an invitation to that um, shortly. Um, I just want to say thank you so very much, Emily, for taking time to inform us and educate us about this wonderful resource that's available free of charge to all of us. 
and I encourage everyone to go um, onto the Task Exchange website and poke around, volunteer, and maybe get some help with um, current guideline projects. So thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, everyone. We're ending a little bit early today, so you have extra time in your day. Thank you.